So I'd like to start by asking a, a question. Um, this is my, my first idea. So my first question is, could you put your hands up if you are literate? <laughs> One illiterate, two illiterate people. Good and, and could you put your hands up if you can close your eyes and while you do so it's dark? Live in perpetual blind. Good to know. Um, second idea then. Uh, the first time I saw a Hanke play, it was actually in Vienna. I don't speak German, so I don't remember the title of the play. But during the play, which was boring, it could be because of the content of the play, but because I don't speak German, someone released a cat on the stage. Maybe someone's heard of this play. I think it's a well known Hanke play. So, a huge part of my original preparation when I first had this date in mind and knew I had to perform was to speak to a friend and ask if I could borrow their cat. They wouldn't let me. So I had to go to my, my third idea. Oh, one more question. Um, does anyone like reading in public? Put your hand up. Just two. Remarkable. Fourth idea. So, I've met Peter Hanker. And I actually met Peter Hanke in a, a festival, a literary festival in Bosnia, which is ironic to some people, but that's true. And he was, like many people I know who spend their whole lives doing one thing, he did not want to speak about writing. What he wanted to speak about, and in fact, let me join him in doing, was mushroom hunting. I don't know if anyone knows this about him, but he's obsessed with collecting mushrooms. So I spent an afternoon in a forest in Bosnia with Peter Hanker, not speaking very much, helping him collect mushrooms. So my fourth idea, uh, and I put a lot of time into this, was to bring to you, all on beautiful plates, a series of mushrooms. And the notion was that the mushrooms, and I was going to describe this in great detail, but those species which look, though they are completely edible, a lot like the mushrooms that will kill you. And I was going to share them with everyone, give a bit of a pause, and see how many people would eat them. <laughs> but, true story, the person I was procuring the mushrooms from in Portobello Road got ill. And on the day that I was supposed to go and collect my mushrooms, today, was unable to do so. What an unfortunate thing, we could have had a mushroom feast together. Didn't work out that way. So I've been left with a fifth idea, or sixth. Am I at sixth? Fifth? Fifth, fifth idea. So these are the various translations of Hanka that I've carried around with me. We to connect to some of the beautiful ideas in Phil's wonderful talk. I discovered writing when I was later in my life than most people. I certainly didn't grow up enjoying literature. I thought it was a waste of time. Not a way to navigate life, but to fritter it away. And then when I did discover it, it was a passion. It struck me only because it was for no one else in the process. I was alone in a room reading. And it was as egoless a thing as I'd ever done, realizing in that moment that most of the things that I had done were to impress other people. And in fact, being alone, with too much words, too much information to be able to share to another person, not remembering the page that I just read when I moved on to the next one, and knowing it was impossible to show someone how I had drained that book of information to make life better, that it was just for me. And one of the primary people that I found in doing so, to help me navigate that feeling, along with the general alienation of being in Middle England, was Peter Hanke. So I know Peter Hanke very well, but through translation. And what I've done is I've raced through these books and picked out a passage on page 56 of six different books. So, Stephen. Anyone regret that choice? <laughs> Every 
everyone who's too scared to read, please close your eyes. <laughs> everyone who's not, please open your book and you'll find a little patch on 56 or 57 which is illuminated in yellow. I'm going to count down from three and please begin reading at the same time. Three, two, one, begin. The block had to lean to one side. The landlady sat down with the estate owner's son, and you could hear her asking him as she sat down what he wanted to drink, and then shouting the elders of the family. For a while, the lot saw them both drinking from the same glass. Whenever the young man said something, the landlady touched him in the ribs. And when she swiped the flat of her hand across his face, he could be seen snapping at it and licking it. Then the landlady had sat down at another table, and she went on with a business-like routine. I so think there is another him. young man here. The estate like of the sun stood up again and reached for the cigarettes in the coat behind Block. When Block shook his head in answer to a question about whether the coat bothered him, he realised he had not lifted his eyes from one and the same spot for quite a while. Block shouted, Bill, please! And everybody seemed to become serious again for a moment. The landlady, whose head was bent backward because she was just opening a bottle of wine, made a sign to the barmaid, who was standing behind the bar, washing glasses. Those of you reading, thank you. Those of you who kept your eyes open while not reading aloud, may you eat a poison mushroom. Thanks. <laughs>